friends are the latest. <laughs> Because you know you have to remember it's it's hard these days because <clears throat> no matter what level it is, we're not dancing to swing music. Mm -hmm. You know, we're dancing to bad disco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. We're dancing to pop music, we're dancing to the radio. Yeah. yeah. Some of the pop music swings, not all of it does. Mm -hmm. If the if the music is for the floor, it's hustle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's hard. You know, you have a lot of these samba songs, which drag me off the wall. And then you have these cha cha, -cha. cha, -cha. You know, and you know, as a Latino, I'm offended. <laughs> you know? um, and you know, and it's, it's not really a thing, you know, the DJs are being you know, a rock and a hard place. Because if you don't play it, people won't dance to it. If you play blues, the young kids think that they're playing old music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of the DJs don't have not done their homework and found contemporary blues songs. There's a lot of new blues songs out there. We don't have to keep playing the songs from 1965. You, know? um, you have a lot of people, even in the master's division, that you know, a lot of times you guys are not being given music that I feel that is good for your tradition. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because when you see the higher divisions even trying to dance in subliminal music, you know, and they look like, you know those balloons outside the garage, you know, the castles? <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you call this swing. Interesting. <laughs> you know, Matrix is swing. That's cool. You know, as long as you come back to swing, I don't care about the Matrix. But bring it back home. Yeah, you gotta come back. You know, in one pattern, you can do at least one triple set. Give me one. You know what I mean? So, yes, sir. What kind of music do you think that they should be playing at master? It's not what you know, would be it's, there? As I said before, there's a lot of contemporary music that swings. If you listen to two four music, it's swinging. You know, if you're listening to your drummer, you know, a drummers we have a rhythm that we call shuffling. If the music shuffles. You're gonna swing to it. But if the music is doing this, if it's more to the floor, it's not swing. You know, if you know what clave is, which is a Latin rhythm, if you could do a clave to a song, it doesn't swing. You know, if it's if it's too heavy on the Latin side, it's not swing. So yes. You mentioned that you when you look at when you judge the big quality of movement and yes. the people that are least offensive. Uh, but now talking about you know masters, mm -hmm. you know some of us are still novice. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of kids. I mean, you automatically kind of it's like, well, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you have to remember, I am a master. <laughs> I can do the master's division. So um, you know, when it comes to the division, like for the leaders in the room. You have to really understand how to reset your body, your posture. This is what a lot of leaders do not do in masters. They don't even do it in, in advance or also either. But you have to use your anchor step as your reset button for your posture. So, a double word since you're closest. So a lot of times if I'm doing a shirt push, for example, on a shirt push on three or four, I lean in, and what a lot of you guys do is that you stay here. You stay here. And then you forget. So you have to remember when you do your, your anchor, reset your posture. You do a side pass. Reset your posture in counterbalance. And if you're dancing with someone really short, get into your knees. Don't go lower. <laughs> yeah, especially you tall guys. You dance to the little people. <laughs> yeah. Get into your knees. Your knees can bend. Yes. Thank you. Because this is really important for you as leaders to find that counterbalance in the dance. Yeah. Whether you do posted anchor or drifting anchors, I personally don't care. But you as a leader, you have to know which one you're giving your followers. 
And followers, you have to respect whichever anger you're being given, which is very important. Now, a lot of you followers, you do something that's very interesting. You have to remember it's not just your division. It happens across the board. Yes? So, if I've already you. Yes? So, it doesn't matter what you do. So, followers, you go, and you get the connection, and then you go out far away. You do this all the time. Everyone does it. Go. Don't stop. You get there, and then you're like, I can go a little farther out. And I can go a little farther out. You're extending yeah. that arm. Yeah. What was that? You're extending that arm. Yes, this is what a lot of you people do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is my point. You want to keep it. You know, I want you to so respect whatever he gives you. Oh. Yes. So if I go, if I, if he does whatever, this is where he stop me. This is where I'm going to stop. Yeah. I can play within whatever. Yeah. But don't get here and be like. I'm going to go a little far. <laughs> Why? Because I can, because I want to drift. I want to stretch. But you're disrespecting what he's asking of you. Yeah. And then you don't realize, followers, that it puts you into a bad posture now. Now all of a sudden, your butt is, is not underneath the shoulders anymore. Yeah. And by the time you start coming back, waiting until your butt gets yeah. right in line with your axis, maybe you so yeah. your job as the lead is to make her look good. If she gets tense, go with it and make her right. Um, you'd well, be surprised because in your effort of trying to make her right, she's going to keep drifting away from you. <laughs> 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 yeah. So this is something that you really have to watch out for as leads and as followers. Yeah. The counterbalance has to be the V shape, not in the. Now, then you shouldn't look like parentheses. Yeah. But when you counterbalance, you settle, and you don't drift. I mean, you know. You drift if he drifts you. Oh, but, but, but you settle with the weight back to get ready for the end. Yes, but as far as you're asking two different things. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. The settling is one thing, the drifting is another. You should be given a signal to drift. You give them a signal to toast. And you have to remember trying to respect reconnection. Okay. Can you give us an example of drifting that might help more be dance yeah. or something? And so that would be clearer then. So we can reconnect. You know, if you think of an underarm pass, okay? I can make my follower turn at five different moments on the underarm pass. But a lot of you followers, you only have one way because this is the one thing that you were taught. Yeah. So followers, a lot of you were taught to do one and two, and you started turning on three and four, and you eight or five and six. But you have to remember, how about if I don't want you to turn during the three or four? How about if I want you to turn on the four and? Yeah. So if I do this, if I'm doing one, two, three and four and five and six, yes, that's me making your turn late. As opposed to if she turns when she was taught, watch what happens. Notice that my hand is still going down the slot. She was already rotating. We're already going to have the call. Yes. As far as the reconnection moment is concerned, I can reconnect with her on four. I can reconnect with her on six. Those are the two obvious moments. If I reconnect with her on four, it's because I want her to post. If I reconnect on six, I, I'm inviting drifting. But how about if I reconnect on five? How about if I reconnect on four and? Because I can. Yeah, it's going to produce all these different things. So if I'm doing one, two, three, uh, four, five up, you do your thing. Don't worry about me. There you go, thank you. One, two, three, uh, four, five up, six. I can reconnect with her at all different times. And followers, you're here to stay away from us. <laughs> That's your job. Yes. <laughs> stay away. We're making this crap up as we go. You know what I mean? This is not choreography. Yeah. If we were doing a choreographed routine, we both would know what's going to happen next. But on the social floor, 
flip over closer. Yeah. <clears throat> and leaders, you have to have a better idea of what you're going to do. Yeah. A lot of you guys, <clears throat> you tend to think at the moment. It's too, you're too late. If you have ever played your strategy game, you've got to think ahead. Yeah, you've got to think ahead. Mind you, instead of you trying to come up with the, the newest, best trick that you just learned, just acknowledge one of the music. Just acknowledge one. It's always going to be there, no matter what genre of music it is. Yeah? Instead of trying to, you know, like right now, West Coast Swing competitively, even socially, has become like origami swing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, let's see if I can make her into a crane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's it, you know? It's like, it's like, oh, it's, it's ridiculous, man. You know, because the triple step is so hard to do. You know, it's like, it's a. What is your opinion on then being able to triple through your body? I mean, it seems like that's where the dance is going. Um, is that because of the type of music that we're listening to? It's that's kind of right. lending itself then to that. Try to remember that every time that you do a triple step, you have to end it. Which means that you have to get your, your body on a leg. This is the whole thing about doing a triple. You're doing three separate weight changes. But you have to give it an end, otherwise you wind up split weights. And this is what happens across the board. It's not just you guys. Yeah. You see a lot of leaders or followers, or leaders are more, they don't do the triple and then they land all split weight. This is going to get you in trouble. So if you're going to do it with your body, get on the line. Get yourself on axis so that you only have one choice. Yes? If you're going to use another body part, get on the line. And it doesn't have to be a straight leg, it could be a bent knee. I don't care what it is, but you have to be on axis. So you're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Does this all make sense? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Yes, ma'am. So we're, we're typically getting <coughs> kind of like a contemporary slow song, mm -hmm. or maybe a Motown ish kind of mm -hmm. medium tempo, mm -hmm. and then we get a blues. Right. Are there things that particularly make you look at us in the blues that you? Specifically, go, okay, blues, you need to change it from. We have to change, we have to change your choreo yeah. when you're doing blues. But the minute that I hear a blues song, I, it's like, it's almost automatic that I'm going to be posting most of my answers. Right, yeah. 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 Close. Um, you, don't, you don't do head ducks to a blues song. Mm -hmm. You know, as followers, we don't brush our hair to a blues song. <laughs> just, just not worth it. Yeah. Um, blues really tends to cater more to footwork. Um, blues tends to cater more to giving me a little bit more contrast of fast to slow or slow to fast, which we don't see a lot these days because everyone is just trying to do a trick mm -hmm. as opposed to swing dancing. You know, so I got to tell people not on your level. You know, if I wanted to see interpretive dance, I would go to the theater and I would pay really good money to go watch the Alvin Ailey Dance Company or the Joffrey or something like that. Yes. When I go to a swing comp, I want to see um, swing dancing. Yeah. I mean, most people haven't even been to a dance class. So it's really kind of hard. Yes, sir. You were your statement that you made about uh, music and blues on the uh, <coughs> about anchors. Anchoring, you have what we call posted anchors. And the post is usually just before um, your anchor set. <coughs> but you're saying all through, well, in blues, you want to you see the posting on the force of the dance. Yeah, five, six, because, five. I mean, even if you're dancing to the melody of the song, or if you're dancing more to the harmony, you still it still has more of a pulse than you are dancing to contemporary music. And this is why with contemporary music, it's hard because if it's not too four time, you know, we, we are actually imposing the dance on the music. Because the music doesn't swing. Yeah. It's like... This 
song comes on, everyone runs to the floor. That's all I want. I, I just want to hustle to this or go to the ball. <laughs> There's nothing in this song that makes me want to just like, same choreography 
You know, because if you look at a lot of people out there, and this is in your division also, a lot of these guys only have like six moves and that's it. Yeah. So you really have to, now you gotta decorate these moves a little differently. Start dissecting your patterns on your own. What else can we do besides walk ball? You can do tap ball change, kick ball change, knee pop and go, hitch and go. Start putting this into your vocabulary. How many different ways can you doctor up an anchor step? With or without a trip? <coughs> yeah. Start learning how to do this. Do what the Europeans did. They went on YouTube and they learned this dance on YouTube. Go on YouTube and take a look at someone that is close to your body type. Okay? Don't just go to anyone. Don't go to the biggest hot shop. Go to someone who is close to your body type and see if you like what they're doing. <coughs> Many moons ago when I used to compete in ballroom, me and my partner were doing a standard and we were stupid enough to take a lesson from this couple that was 6'2". <laughs> and the only reason why we did it was because at my studio, we brought them in to do workshops. We took advantage. Yeah. They were world champions. Yeah. We were like, let's do it. And you know, my man, his name is Stephen Hillier. And the first thing, I take the lesson, I, you know, I'm usually in a pair of dress slacks and a shirt, button down shirt. And he goes, Mr. Angel, is, is this the way you're going to have your lesson? And I looked down at myself and I said, you know, instead of being the wisecracker that I usually <laughs> I came and I was like, well, Stephen, what would you like? And he goes, do you have a name tie? And I was like, I would be very <laughs> And I went to my office. Necktie. Well, like, no, we have no, there's a method to his madness. But anyway, but now I'm a necktie. Fine. We continue with the lesson. So if you. If you put on a necktie properly, the point of your tie should point to the bottom of your belt. But if you swing it up and you hold on to it with your partner, it gives you the perfect distance for your frame. Yes? Brilliant. And all of a sudden, my fear of an actual was so much better. She was just... You held on to the necktie? She held on to my hand and we put the necktie in each other. Yes? Amazing. Brilliant. So, but, you know, for some of the things that he was trying to show me, <laughs> didn't make sense. Because I couldn't stretch. I mean, he had legs that started at my throat. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, so this is what I'm saying. Try to work with someone that's close to your body type. This is what's going to make a lot more sense to you. Yeah? They're going to move similarly to you. Yeah. Granted, it'd be wonderful to take a lesson from, you know, such and such. But what are you really going to get out of it besides a move? Yeah. But this is what you have to start thinking about. And for a lot of the leaders, it's all about your weight change. Getting on access. No matter what you do, you got to get yourself on your foot. What I want to say a lot from leads and followers and masters, <coughs> And don't take this wrong, everyone. Yes? You have lazy feet. You have really lazy feet. Okay? Start learning how to articulate your ankles. Articulate your feet. A lot of you followers, you have nice leg swing from knee to, from hip to knee. From knee to foot, six. So you get this and then it does. Yeah? Get that leg out there. Swing that leg. Whether you do a heel lead or a toe lead, I don't care. Yeah. Doing one of the other is really determined by whatever comes out of that speed. Come on in, folks. Take a seat. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, this was, I think, here a couple of years ago, or maybe last year. It was in the Masters um, competition. Mm -hmm. And they played all 40s music. I felt like it was a gift because we it had the sway in it, you know. And every single song, the masters, they didn't do it at any other levels, but I thought it was a gift to the masters. And you know what? That doesn't happen very often. No. 
And mind you, a lot of times, I go to events and the masters get pissed when they either, when they don't get contemporary music, or when they get too much of it. Yeah, there's no happy medium. Yeah. This is why a lot of times when I chief judge, I always make sure that my DJs give me at least one blue song. Because the blue song is really what separates the men from the boys. Yeah. No matter what division it is. Yeah. And this is why the youngins underneath you, they don't know how to taste the blues. They don't like it, but it's also they don't know how to taste it. You know, they keep they keep trying to do contemporary movements of blues. It looks like that. Why do you get it? Because <laughs> when you have ten couples on the floor, someone has to come first. You have to get judged. Now mind you, if you understand the relative placement, you understand how to read the grid, a lot of times we have to go to second or third place to get a first place couple. Yeah. That's not good. But you have to remember everyone just is happy that they came in first. What about when, I mean, when I look at those, sometimes you've got uh, seven judges, mm -hmm. you've got a one, and you've got a ten. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can have two firsts, and then we go down to third, then six, then seven. That means I had to go to fourth place to find you. That's not good. When I have to go down that low, down the column, to get a first place couple, you know, the judges can only go with what's on the floor. Now, mind you, in a heated format, 10 couples on the floor, you get 270 seconds. Three songs, a minute and a half each, 90 seconds. 270 seconds, and I have to divide 10 into that, so that means that each couple gets 27 seconds. If that. You know, that's not a lot to determine whether you're dancing well enough. Yeah, but that's all we have. We're only here for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I need Monday morning, so it's like, come on, let's go. Walk, walk, triple, triple. How hard is it? You know what I'm Yeah, yes, ma'am. This is my lazy eye, I'm looking at you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so when you're talking about the best quality of women, what you're saying, making some notes, what yep. would you say are like the three major things that you're looking for when you're really thinking about following? Uh, from the followers' point of view, I'm looking for pause in between one, two, four, and six. In a six column pattern, you only have four chances to look good. And those are your moments. You know, we, we use the words and of one, and of two, but we have to put physical responsibilities to these words. And the easiest thing to think of, whether you're leading or following, is that on and, I have relaxation, on up, I have leg swing, and on the number, I have weight change. And you have to remember, I'm talking about something with no decoration. Right? With your triple steps, make up your mind quickly of how you're going to divide your triple to the song that you're listening to. What a lot of you do, and it's not just, just so you understand, I'm not only talking about masters, this is across the board, okay? But when we talk about a triple step, you should not only have one way of doing a triple. So if I gave you 100 pounds, and you divide it in thirds, the easiest division is 33, 33, and 33. But we have one pound left, because that's only 99. So of the three steps, who are you going to give that extra pound to? The first, second, or third step? The first. You're going to give it to the first. Who agrees with her? Or you can give it to anyone. The third, third, third step. I'm going to give it to the last. No, 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 no. Don't start answering. Who agrees with giving it to the first step? Okay, so two. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so that means that you're doing one, or two, three, or four. As opposed to one, or two. Three, uh, four. Yes? Because the natural pulse of music is on the second beat. It's not on the first. Yeah. But you can divide this triple step a plethora of ways. Yeah. I can do 25, 25, 50. I could be 30, 30, 40. I don't care how you divide it, but the last step.
up should get most of your weight. Not all of your weight, most. You know, we don't want to give it 100 pounds. Because that means that the other foot is over 40. Yes? 70 30, 80 20. There's still pressure on the floor with my free leg. A lot of your followers, you give up your back leg too quickly on your walks. One, two. That leg is bent so quick, it's ridiculous. A lot of you do this all the time. Yeah, stretch that leg. Use the floor. So, one be bent and one straight? There is a moment that you have two straight legs. Then you bend and relax. You have two straight legs, then you bend and relax. As opposed to stepping and bending right away. Yeah, you see this all the time on the floor. Across the board. <laughs> Twos and fours. This is where the groove is. Yeah. This is where the natural groove is in music. Twos and fours. That's where the cool people are hanging Yeah. The music starts right away. Right? And pop. The drunk guys are drunk. <laughs> Why do? But again, why are you going away from what we do on our base? 
on our base, we do small, small, big. You do this on sidelines. You do this on show push. Why are you going to change that philosophy when you do this thing? Right? And it's all about getting yourself on your leg. If you take the up count, that's your pushing foot. Three, up, get yourself to that foot. <coughs> Same thing with your spin. Three, up, get yourself to that leg. Yeah, don't just hope you land. <laughs> yeah, and I don't care where you land. So a lot of you, you do your spin and you're like, well, I was told I gotta land here before I do anything. I don't care where you land, just be happy you landed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah? If you land under rotated to the slot, that's even better. Yeah? Stop being so obedient to the slot. Yeah? This is what you learned when you first learned this dance. Now, almost gotta throw it out the window. But you have to remember, you can only throw it out the window if you have good connection. It's all about the connection. It's all about the respect for each other on the dance floor. And the other thing is, don't be afraid to touch each other. It's a contact sport, I don't know if you heard. <laughs> yeah? And it kills me because a lot of you, you will get this close to each other before you touch. It kills me. And I love you followers. You followers are like, you're like... <laughs> <laughs> you guys are getting so close. It's on the computer, Dan. So, you know how we, we do these, uh, these hand drapes over your head? Yes. We, you know, everyone does this, right? Yes. We all, it's a, that's, the, that's move number four. <laughs> yes. And a lot of you, you'll come in, and you won't you say what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have been pushing off right there. Push. Push off of me and push yourself back. Yes? If you're going to get in that close, touch me. Yeah, we're not going to pick up furniture. <laughs> An angel. There's daytime hours on the body, and there's nighttime hours on the body. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. You're all grown up. <laughs> yeah. But don't be afraid, though. It's like, this is one of the things that we really have to start paying attention to on the competitive floor. But if you don't do this comfortably on the social floor, it's not going to translate. Yeah. Don't expect it all of a sudden to be something really great just because you're touching the wood floor. That's not the way it works. Yeah? What else? That under rotation that you were talking about, Angel. What was that? That under rotation on the spin that you were yes. talking about, does that also help our connection? Yes, it does. Yeah. At, when we come down, we have all that time now to, yeah. to connect and be wherever you need to be. You know, what a lot of people wind up doing is that they give this, they give connection and then they let go. Right. And this is something that you really have to watch out for as leaders and followers. Yeah. And for the leaders, a lot of you, you suck after your followers. So you, you, you reconnect and then you disconnect and then you try to reconnect again. So you just gave your partner three different ideas. Yeah. Give the partner one idea. And followers, you can do this to the leaders also. Yeah. So don't think that this is a one way street. It's not. This is a conversation. Yeah. So we can either have a conversation or we can have an argument. It's totally up to you. Yeah. It, is it true when, when you're doing an underarm test or any, your connection, it never goes to neutral? Is that right? It's never. I never drop off. No. It's always somewhere. I always have something. Like if you're thinking of ampage, I'll go down to five. I'll go to five amps, but I'm never going to zero. Yeah. Okay. What's the high? Well, figure out. Oh. <laughs> well, it depends on what your threshold is. Oh, oh, I'm saying. Yeah, you got to figure out with your follower, with your leader, what is the threshold? What is neutral? Yeah, if neutral is 50, fine. So that means that 50 will be step number one all the time, unless otherwise it's not. And we have to think that in the middle of the pattern, we will be at our lightest, because that's where the swing is. Just do it. Right? But there's still something. So if you think that step number one is 50 pounds, step number two is 45, your triple step we're at 40, or 30, whatever you, however light you want to be. Because that's where the tuck turn happens, that's where the whip happens, that's where the straight happens. Yeah. 
the dirty anchor set, we have to start ramping this back up to 50. So we're always coming back to our neutral. So this way, throughout the song, we will know what our connection is. We don't have to worry about that. But leaders, you have to remember, like I said before, what a lot of you do is that you, you reconnect somewhere around the anchor, and then you disconnect because you're trying to do just a tappy tappy of me, and then you forget about her or she forgets about you. Yeah. And followers, when the leaders give you that proverbial under our past where you're supposed to show off, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where the guys just stand in, they look like Elvis on a bad day, right? So they do one, two, and they're just like, <laughs> and it's just like it kills me. Yeah, they don't even do this either. I'm mean, like, at least do something with your legs. Do something, but you followers, and this is again across the board, you start doing flicky, flicky, tappy, tappy. And you're like having a good time, and then I can see it in your face, you're like, I don't know how to get out of this. <laughs> yeah. And what do we do for you as leaders? We're like, here we go. <laughs> we do that whole little thing with the hand that we have to do. Because this needs anchor set. <laughs> That is a universal sign. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. And again, this is not just masters. This is across the board. This is everyone. This is every division. Goes to the same thing. Just that you guys have been at it longer, that's all. Yeah. Show me what you can do. Yeah. Don't show me what you just learned in class, you know, two or three hours ago. Yeah, save that for down the road. Yeah. Don't forget to look at each other. That's half the lead followers looking at each other. Stop mugging the audience. <laughs> yeah. For audience members, you are like TV. Especially in the spotlight. I only have one channel to look at. Yeah. So why are you looking at me? Look at you. And everyone does it. You're the whole thing of going one, two, three, and four. <laughs> I'm like, great. So now you're dancing with me? Or are you dancing with her? Right? So these are some of the things that you have to start work. You know, even if you're going to do this to the audience, look at each other as you go. Who the hell cares? Yeah? And don't look at your judges. Your judges always have some stoic face on them. Yeah, they look bored out of their brains. So the minute you see that, you know you're going to shut down, so don't look at that. Yeah? Yes? So in spotlight, like when people think of the performance, they can write the show, or they can kill them, <coughs> there's this presentational to the audience face stuff. If it's choreographed that way, yes, then I expect you to look. But if but it's not, you know, look at each other. <laughs> you know, if your choreography choices are to us, then fine, you can look at us, but don't forget that you've got someone on the other side of your hand. You know what I mean? And even after you're done, let's get back here. Yes? Anyone else? So if, if the music goes up into samba or cha cha or something like that, um, is it a good thing to acknowledge that by like even throwing a little bit of that in your back, or is it? You know what? Like it's good if you're good at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if you know how to do a song and roll and you know the footwork and everything, fine. Yeah, you're supposed to be doing three quarters of a turn on each half of a song and turn. So if you're thinking <laughs> because you don't know the book, then don't do it. So if sir, you don't know how to do it, cha cha lots, then don't do it. So, sir, have you had any kind of like how long you would do cake in there? Eight, sixteen beats, get the hell out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're going to fake a samba roll in right place, fine. Then get the hell out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just if you're not good at it, don't. This is what I'm saying. Don't show me what you think you can do well, just if you know that you can really pull this off, you know, because you have it in your toolbox, and you can pull that out, fine. But if not, and then mind you, if you don't know how to transition it, if you don't know how to transition well into it and well out of it, then we have fumbling. 
And I can tell you right now, that's when we're going to look at you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, when you're done, that's when we look at you. All the time. Happens all the time. And then you know it too when we're looking at you. And then all of a sudden, your energy drops. Yeah? You have to know you got to dance like no one's watching. And if you don't like being looked at, don't do West Coast work. <laughs> if you don't like being looked at, don't do it. I'm telling you. Yeah? This is a voyeuristic sport. Where are you going to ask? Have you ever competed in Masters now that you are in Masters? What's happening with all these pros that are turning 50? Are we going to start competing? Well, you know what? Mind you, um, many years ago, I was at Dallas Dance. And I was already over 50. And uh, I was doing, I think Debbie and I would do a classic. They asked us to do a number because uh, they didn't have enough couples or whatever. And so we were going to the meeting. And the meeting was encompassing classic showcase and masters like Strictly or Jack and Jill or whatever. And we all had to be at the meeting. So I'm sitting there, and two or three of the masters guys come on their like, Angel, are you here for Masters? And I was like, no, I'm doing classes. They're like, oh, thank God. Because if you do Masters, I'm out. You know, and not that that's really saying anything, but, and that's not the reason why I don't do Masters. I just, you know, it's, I've been head judging for heaven knows how long. I've been judging for heaven knows how long. I've never really wanted to do the Masters. You know, it's like once Debbie and I stopped doing Classic and Showcase, I just, you know, I'll do, Jack and Jill's and Strickland's, but not Masters, for whatever reason. And I'm just one of many, so, you know. Yes, sir, last one. Triple steps and a break versus a movement. If, as a lead, you want to hit one or whatever you're in, you're trying to delay a stop or convey the stop. And you can. Where do you look for? Can you do a stationary triple step there? Sure. Or, or typically, I do a triple step to travel. Okay. So either is that something? Make a decision. Yeah. And stop trying to stop her. Stop yourself. If you have a good connection, you should be able, she should be able to feel it. Yeah. Okay. So I hope this helps. All right. So I thank you for waking up and. Um, Let's just walk.